Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. We continue talking about units of measurements in physics. Primarily, um, we, will, we are talking right now about base units in uh, the, uni in the uh, international system of uh, units called C. Um, so today we will talk about brightness and how to measure it. This lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website. Uh, you might have found it somewhere else, on YouTube, for example. Um, uh, the website, this unizor.com, is preferable because every lecture has a textual part. It's like a textbook, so you can watch the lecture and you can read basically the same thing in, in, in kind of a written textbook-like uh, format. Uh, the website is logically arranged, obviously. Uh, it's the course, which means there are something which we have to talk about first, and then based on this we talk about next, 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 etc. So there is a logical sequence, and there is obviously a menu, hierarchical menu, which drives the whole course. Um, there are uh, problems, there are exams in the course. So uh, it's preferable to take the course, basically. Um, on the website. Now there is a prerequisite course on the same website, it's called Math for Teens, and uh, you definitely have to know um, your math before studying physics. Um, by the way, the, uh, the website is totally free and there are no advertisements, just pure knowledge for your consumption. Okay, now, so we're talking about, we're talking about brightness and how to measure it. Well, it's kind of a difficult subject because the brightness depends on so many different factors including subjective factors like the sensitivity of our eyes. So, um, physicists um, were kind of struggling with this uh, particular issue and uh, what I will present right now is some kind of a analysis of how they were thinking about to measure the brightness prior to basically saying how the system uh, C is measuring it right now. Okay, So it's from a relatively simple um, beginning how can we actually go to the rather complicated ending of measuring the brightness. Okay, so let's start with relatively simple concept which we um, understand. Now, what is light? Light is electromagnetic oscillations, and we were talking about what kind of energy electromagnetic waves actually carry. Now, this is all in the previous lecture. And by the way, this is why I'm talking about you have to take the course, because right now I'm just using something which have been covered before. So electromagnetic waves carry energy and basically we know what kind of energy it is, how to measure it, etc. So the first uh, concept which I would like to talk about is something which is called radiant, radiant, radiant flux. But ben basically, radiant flux is amount of energy any particular source of light emits per second, per unit of time, which is second. So it's energy which is measured in watts in C, and uh, time is measured in seconds. So it's basically in joules. This is just pure energy as physics, physicists understand it. Okay, so, radiant flux is basically understandable what it is. It's just the amount of energy which source of light emits per unit of time. Now, next concept, you remember we were talking about some subjective elements like sensitivity. Okay, so let's introduce the sensitivity to this. And this is called luminous, luminous flux. 
Well, this is also amount of energy, but not exactly the same as radian. There is a there is a very simple modification. Simple modification is sensitivity of our eyes. Yes, all our eyes are different. However, there are certain average sensitivity towards different waves, different wavelengths. Obviously, outside of the visible light, um, the radiant flux would still exist, but luminous flux should not. So, what physicists came up with is basically a function called luminosity function. So, what is this? Well, if these are different wave lengths, and this is sensitivity, which is basically a factor. Maximum is at 1. It's somewhere where the sensitivity, average sensitivity among different people, is uh, at maximum. It's about 550 nanometers, which is basically uh, green and the border was yellow. This is our sensitive. Our sensitivity is at maximum, these colors. And that's where it's equal to 1. And then it goes down on both sides, and these are basically visible lights. This is um, ultraviolet, and this is uh, no, this is ultraviolet. Uh, no, this is ultraviolet, less um, wavelengths, and greater will be infrared, right? So basically, that's the function which have been basically established as a luminous luminosity function. Actually, there are more than one functions because uh, it depends on just general conditions, um, maybe lighting or something else. But in any case, there is something which is called the standard um, luminosity function. And what it does, y of lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. So luminous flux is basically radiant flux times this function. So amount of energy emitted, if you multiply by this function, that would be the, the luminosity flux per unit of time, of course. Now, what if the source of light actually emits um, uh, the light in many different wavelengths. Like, for instance, sun has the whole spectrum from, from, from violent to, to, from violet to red, right? So, how can we deal with this? Well, we summarize. For each uh, wavelength, we calculate this and we we'll just summarize amount of energy which in this particular um, wavelength is emitted. Well, that's only if you have certain discrete um, uh, wavelengths. What if it's a continuous, uh, continuous wavelength from this to that? Well, obviously, you have to integrate. So if you have something like function which is called radiant flux, which is dependent on the um, wavelengths, this is radiant, which means it's a pure energy per uh, per time. So you multiply it by this function y of lambda, which is luminosity function, and then you integrate it from zero to infinity for all kinds of wavelengths. So this gives you the total uh, luminosity function okay, of this source of light. Um, Okay, so basically we have introduced radiant flux and uh, luminous flux. Now the unit of measurements of luminous flux, well, it's not exactly the same as radiant because it's radiant times luminosity function, which reflects the sensitivity. So the unit is called then lumen. 
So the, this lumen is luminosity flux unit. Now, in theory, it's the same joules, the same unit of um, uh, energy per, 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 per time, but with the, um, the, the factor of luminosity function, which basically reduces the number for all different um, wavelengths except the, ma the maximum. <coughs> okay, so lumen is basically joule times this factor, uh, which is called the luminosity function. It's dimensionless, but still we have a different unit of measurement. Now, this is not the unit of measurement of C. This is so far kind of an explanation, and I'm trying to gradually come to the concept of measurement of luminosity as it is in C right now. So, we have introduced the lumen. All right, now, lumen is basically a unit of measurement of the um, luminosity, uh, luminous flux, which means it's all over the, uh, the source of the light. Okay, how about the direction? Because sometimes the source of light can give uniform light to all directions, sometimes not. So we have to really introduce what is the brightness, if you wish, towards particular direction. Okay. Now, for this reason, um, we have a, basically a concept of the angle. But in this case, it's not the angle uh, on the plane. Uh, on, on, on the plane, it's the angle in space, and angles in space also can be measured. Now, um, remember uh, that if you have an angle on a plane, what you do is you have a, a, a circle, right? And if this length of the arc is equal to one radius, then the angle is called one radian, right? Well, in three-dimensional world, we have a similar thing. It's called steradian. Steradian. Stereometric, basically. Stereoradian. Steradian. Now, what is steradian? Well, if you have a, a sphere, and you have a cone, which basically cuts something, from the surface of the screen, uh, of, of the sphere. Now, if the area is 1 r square, where r is the radius, then this uh, solid angle, which is inside the cone, is called, uh, is, is measured as 1 steradian. Okay, it's kind of similar to plane geometry. And that's how we measure solid angles. It's like a cone. The question is, what is the area? By the way, the area of the whole sphere is um, 4 pi r square, if you remember. Now, similarly, in the two-dimensional world, the length is equal to 2 pi r, right? So, which means in the uh, full angle, we have 2 pi radians. In this full solid angle, we have 4 pi steradians. Okay? So, steradian is a measurement of the angle. And what I would like to say is that the new unit is Camp Candela. It's basically lumens per steradian. So if you have the total amount of basically energy emitted per second and we divide it by angle, that's so per unit of angle, so to speak. What's going on over there? Okay. Um, so if you have total amount of energy per second, you divide it per angle where it's actually distributed, you will get 
um, the brightness in that particular direction. So that's what, what, what's important. Okay, now this is all analysis. I'm just trying to gradually bring you to the concept of Kandela. Now, it's kind of difficult because you brought everything into this variable, which is um, amount of energy, uh, direction, and sensitivity. Too many different factors are contributing into this particular unit of measurement of brightness. Now, how was it basically measured before? Well, in the very beginning, one candle made of a specific um, composition, whatever the candles are made of, of specific form or specific weight, um, was about a one candle. I mean, it was distributing the light, which was considered in any direction, as one uh, candela. That was kind of a beginning of introducing the brightness as a in measurements of the brightness. So they were saying that the brightness of one particular candle of specific kind of composition in a specific direction would be one candela. Well, obviously it was not perfect. I mean, candles, that was a long time ago. <laughs> well, then they decided to do it a little bit more scientifically. So they were saying, okay, let's take platinum, melt it, and when it's melting, uh, it actually emits certain amount of light, melting, uh, mel melting platinum. So amount of light, which is emitted by one square centimeter of melting platinum, um, the temperature should be really right where it starts melting or starts freezing. Melted, m m melted uh, platinum starts solidifying or solid platinum starts melting. This particular temperature, temperature of melting. Whatever the light is emitted from melting platinum, and then they divided it by 60, would be one candela, uh, abbreviation of candela CD. Now, why did it divide it by 160? Well, to bring it into correspondence with candles. So the new candela would be basically the same as the old candela. Old candela is the brightness of a ca candle. New candela is the brightness of melting platinum. But to basically equalize them, they put one centimeter of the surface of the platinum, melting platinum, and divided by 60. The brightness, amount of energy, basically, divided by 60. Now, this is also not perfect, because again, there is a sensitivity of the eye, etc., etc. So, what was next? Well, next, physicists decided to be precise. Now, how to be precise? Well, first of all, to be precise, they should really get rid of um, uh, polychromatic light. They should go to monochromatic because it actually is uh, something much more precise. And they have chosen the wavelengths which corresponds to maximum intensity, uh, maximum sensitivity, excuse me, uh, of the eye, which is um, 540 times 10 to 12 hertz which is about 550 nanometers wavelength. So this is the frequency, this is the wavelength, uh, and this is basically the greenish-yellowish kind of a color which, is, um, which our eye is the most sensitive to. And that's where the luminosity function, remember, it has the peak where it's equal to 1. So we don't really have to get this luminosity function into account for this particular wavelengths. So for this light, they have decided monochromatic light. Okay, so then they decided to <coughs> um, 
have this particular life and uh, they have divided it by six one six eighty three Joe's uh, per steradion. So again, Joe's is amount of energy um, per second divided by steradion because we are talking about one particular direction. So the amount of light of this particular light which is equal to one six six hundred and eighty third eighty third of one joule per steradian is called one candela by definition. So now you see we are before we kind of came up with the con with the concept of candela starting from um, starting from the uh, radiant flux and then luminous flux etc etc divided it into steroidian and got candela. Now we have divided, decided to do it more precise and we have decided that one candela means certain amount of energy, I mean this amount of energy per unit of time, per unit of solid angle would be by definition one candela. It does not involve uh, any uh, other wavelengths but this one. So if this amount, if this light of this particular um, frequency, this particular wavelength emits this particular uh, amount of energy per unit of time, per unit of uh, solid angle, then this is the light which we consider to be one candela. From which we come up with lumen as a unit which is candela times steradion. So if it's one candela in one steradion that would produce amount of um, luminous flux equals to one lumen, okay, which is basically uh, energy per uh, unit of time, joules, right? Now it's lumen because now we can introduce the um, luminosity function and we can multiply it by whatever the uh, brightness of this particular source of light is to get to uh, any other particular wavelengths. So that would be kind of a scale which we are using to measure the brightness of all other. Yes, then we will introduce this luminous function. Uh, but it's not part of the, of the standard, so to speak. Standard is to define candela using only this particular light and if it's emitting this particular amount of energy per second per solid angle. So that's the definition of candela and from candela we go to luminous uh, uh, flux, etc. And uh, as at the conclusion of this lecture, I'll just give you a concrete example of how much um, lumens are produced by certain uh, devices which you have. Now, if we would like to have 800 lumens output, that's what 60 watt um, incand uh, incandescent lamp gives. That is about 14 watts fluorescent and uh, about 10 watts of LED lamp. So all of these they consume different amount of energy to produce this amount of light, basically. So you see, this is consumption of energy. This is output energy, output of electromagnetic oscillations produced by this particular source of light. So this incandescent, fluorescent, and LED. 
And also, <coughs> if, for example, you have a source of light of one candela, and it's uniform in all directions, then how much lumens does it produce? If, it, if we are talking about only the light of one candela, we have to multiply it by how many radiant stair radians are in the sphere, right? Which means 4 pi. So it's 4 pi lumens. So one candela, if this is the source of light which produces uh, the brightness of this light is one candela, which means one joule per second per stair radian. Then you multiply it by a number of stair radians in a sphere, and that's how much um, lumens it produces uh, throughout the whole space in all directions, but only if it's uniform. Now, what if it's not uniform? I mean, you can think about certain sources of light which are not uniformly distributing light in all direction. Well, you have to integrate as usual. But let's not talk about this. It's kind of a rare rare stuff. Okay, so my purpose was to explain how physicists are measuring um, the brightness. Was it necessary to introduce this candela as a unit, as a base unit in C? Well, quite frankly, no, because it's derived from joules, from seconds, and from steroidians. But, but for whatever reason, they have decided to basically call it one of the base units um, and uh, instead of derived units. And that concludes basically my base units in C um, uh, explanation. Now, I will talk next lectures, I will talk about derived units. And obviously, there are derived units. I mean, the same Joules, actually, is also a derived unit, for instance, right? So, base units are finished. We will, next lecture, we will start derived units. Meanwhile, I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Um, so, basically, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.